So, hello everybody. I thought this would be an excellent moment for another update on our farm here at Luga da Terra. One hour north of Lisbon in Portugal at the coast, so let's say five kilometers from the coast, where we are having our agroforestry integrated market garden system. And um, just had a little bit of rain and everything looks beautiful. The compost becomes black. Normally it looks super dry and brown, which is less attractive to look at. But now after this rain, everything is shiny and has a good uh, color. So makes a nice video. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you can see we have uh, our mini market garden here near the house and um, I'm gonna take a look in the tunnel do a lot of companion planting this year so we are growing here the cosmos then below there we have calendula for our balsams it's a little too much companionship you can see the calendulas here on the side of the mountain spinach mountain spinach has been selling really good this year it's uh, at the end stage, starting to make seeds, as you can see. It's a really good crop for, for having in the garden to yeah, make a salad mix more beautiful. And there's other stuff really interesting going on. We are doing a companion planting here of uh, lettuce with onions and then beetroots. But then we're also having, um, uh, yeah, we call this um, Pera Malau, which is, um, uh, I think, Pinu is the name, but it's it's not cucumber or something. It is, um, yeah, it's from the Solanaceae family, and it makes these really nice fruits. And we have one in the greenhouse that I can show you. And uh, over here they are. And these are... Um, getting really juicy and the taste is strawberry um like no yeah strawberry melon pear me, pear like so pear and melon that's the name but i'm actually mixing up now this the taste with feijoa which is strawberry and ananas but this one is pear melon like taste so i plant them every 60 centimeter we have a, a drip line which is has an interval of 20 centimeters between the drips. So what we do is we put here three onions, that we can sell as spring onion. Then we have this uh, pita melon, and then we do three onions again. Now here's an accidental potato. And then we get um, the onions. So here you can see is a good one, it's developing nicely. And then meanwhile, we also start taking these beets out as baby beets or as big beets. We start selling from baby onwards, of course. And um, yeah, and then some uh, lettuce on the side. So yeah, you can see every 60 centimeters is popping up this nice one. And funny enough, I had last year potatoes. A lot of it's coming back, so it's an extra companion. We also have companions of something I don't really like here, which is the bindweed. But actually, until now it's manageable. We'll probably have the onions out by the problem by the time they become really problematic and the same for the crabgrass or whatever name this has uh, i have ways to manage especially like i said when all those fast crops like the beets the onions and the lettuce is out and this one can develop as you see into a big plant and by then i have time to manage this here and there with some uh, nice electric tool a transformed mini hedge trimmer to clean up the grasses or at least to hold them back a little before they become too invasive and we just give them a trim and you can see them here in the pathway also they're quite strongly uh, present well when it's managed it it looks of course a little bit more like soil earthy and yeah just dead grass which is then becoming a nice mulch so it is basically growing your mulch on side it gives management it gives my uh, yeah it gives us time to invest in 
I mean, it takes us time to invest in, in management. But again, it brings back this nice organic matter on the beds. It gives this centropic growth pulse to the system. Like these grasses here. We like to chop them, rather pulling it all out. Like I'm always emphasizing on in most of the videos. And something else that's really, uh, really nice. We have here um, a very messy bed with a lot of different things growing, not all intentionally. I would say 50-50 at the moment. Uh, the amaranth that you're seeing, the red amaranth, is actually the one I'm gonna let establish as one of my main crops here because we love to use them for uh, salad mixes and so on. So this is a really nice addition to a salad mix. And um, yeah, they make endless, endless shoots of that. So there's mint coming up everywhere. So this bed is quite full of mint. There is um, summer purslane, which we love. We use it a lot. It's a great crop. And there's even wild amaranth here. Um, there was supposed to be growing kale, um, which is growing, but it's not really dominating the bed. As, as you can see, the emerald takes over. And yeah, we are kind of flexible with how we manage things. At a certain point, it just doesn't make sense to insist on something if it doesn't work. And something else does actually work very well. Then it's obvious that this is the crop we want to grow in this bed. Of course, if they, they are not of use to us, we would have to do a restart when things don't work. It actually doesn't happen so much anymore that we plant a bed and it all fails. There's always something, especially when you double plant and triple plant and there's a lot of companion planting going on in most of the beds. A good example here, I um, had mint and a lot of grass, you can see. And um, in the middle we have this um, elephant garlic, which we just pushed in between the mint in the beginning. So they can easily come along you can see the elephant garlic garlic is okay we will have some um, scapes some garlic scapes and um, then there is hopefully also still turmeric coming on the back and that's something that might have to take uh, might have to wait for that they will want to grow i think it looks like the point that i will take these garlics out the uh, in June, the, the, the turmeric really wants to come out. So I would have to basically give a sort of a restart to the bed, get everything down to ground level and give uh, the turmeric an easy, or uh, yeah, an even chance with the others to come out. Now here's a companion blend that actually didn't work so well. I was expecting it to work really well. I did the same thing. I have here a lot of oregano and I put it um, again, elephant garlic in the middle. The whole row was full of it and now you can see they are somehow a little bit affected by the pressure of the roots of the of the oregano and and this results in predation by other animals that are in the ground so never had that with elephant garlic that they got got eaten at the base i think that's what is happening um or there's just not enough yeah just not enough space for them to grow as the oregano is really dominating this space. Happily we will have a crop out of this bed because the oregano flowers are great for us. We're using them as well to sell. And uh, yeah, so let's go into the tunnel. Um, now lately we've been growing Levisticum, which is a really cool plant. I'm gonna try to plant much more of that. A lot of lettuce and some nice drying racks there, which is actually a nursery rack. I can show you a little bit more on that. This is Peruvian peppers. They're coming along. We planted them last November. We're now in May. And uh, they make these really beautiful peppers. And um, I'm actually waiting for the flowers because I was a bit impatient this spring or this winter. I took the first green peppers, but I should have waited. Here, another companion plant. You got um, peppers again. This is not the Peruvian variety, this is a small spicy um, 
padrão and um, below an old crop coming back a sorrel you can still harvest from it and some lettuce on the back um, yeah so the sorrel is not really expressive now because we recently harvested but it all the time comes back out of there and now we have got another crop here which is um, the kale on both sides and what we did in the beginning we just did the whole bed three three lines basically with direct seeded kale with the jeng we got a lot of kale coming we got a lot of baby kale which we could just chop right from the from the top off and it continued growing into three lines very dense and too dense because it got all a bit mildewish but um i uh, took one line out the middle line and i put it in yam in the ground so now we will have in yam coming up let me find you the one that is already popping out somewhere yeah i saw it so you get it here and um yeah hopefully yeah here's another one so they will come out and they will basically become this huge plant as tall as a sunflower probably L very large leaves but by then all this kill is already out and uh, partially becomes mulch so here we have another interesting companion plant in the bed we have main crop cherry tomatoes and ginger See the gingers coming along on both sides of the bed. In the middle drip we have the tomato with the basil. You can see over here. And um, yeah, so we will have to try the tomatoes soon so we can um, use these clips and to, so we can help them up. The beans are uh, the first uh, crop that went in together with the ginger. So we did ginger in the ground. We sow carrot on the back and in the middle and there's still carrots over there you can see some leftovers and we do we did beans on top of the ginger so the, the cool thing about ginger is you can basically put it in the ground and direct sow something on top of it which has kind of a yeah which comes out fast basically so and this is what happened we we basically took all those carrots right on top of the ginger and the ginger wasn't up yet now the carrots are out, ginger's coming out. Same with the beans, beans are done. You just didn't take the effort to chop them out, but they actually can still take some seeds from here because they're nice old beans on there. And um, yeah, by then the middle row of carrot went out. I put it, uh, the tomato and the basil in. So it's a very dense bed actually with a lot of crops, but it's nicely stacked in time. So yeah i was afraid that the beans would be covering too much the, the ginger but it actually works so nice I, the only thing i had to do is harvest the beans and this is of course is a low variety so it doesn't climb it makes a, the whole difference but i had to push them into the pathway um but you can see there's still some nice beans and there actually comes a new flush of beans new plants on the on the base of the beans which yeah i can even still decide to leave them along the ginger i'm not really sure actually it doesn't look like it's going to be a super healthy extra crop of beans so probably we'll just chop it out and give the ginger all the light um yeah so a really nice uh, interesting companion plant where you just first harvest those carrots out and um, start harvesting beans very early and then later comes your other long-term crop in this case the ginger and the tomatoes now um, we are here east-west which is, is basically very important to understand that the sun <laughs> will be over there at the hottest point of the day uh, but in the winter this is not ideal when I have tall crops here so when my inyam here is in November this tall hopefully my tomatoes are also still here and then they will also be pretty tall but yeah the inyam will start shading at a certain point a bit of the tomato plant but hopefully 
day the taro in yam is taro um hopefully the tomato will all the time be a little step ahead so the taro will basically be shading just the soil below the tomatoes which is actually beneficial i'm going to take you um along the nursery trace to the um, midland where we have a really interesting agroforestry system going on it looks very lush at the moment and uh, yeah you can see some taro coming up here which is uh, somehow already jumping out it was planted earlier than the ones i was showing you um there are some other peruvian peppers anybody wants to have them kind of don't have space anymore who knows create some later on these are really nice i'm really happy with this these are floating uh, nursery trays so you can see they move i can move them they don't move normally <laughs> but the point is that that the snails and the slugs really hardly get to our our small baby plants like this it's really really useful and uh, we can actually load them quite heavily i realized that we have been loading them full even with water and all and got this really nice uh, yeah nursery trays at the moment they're not loaded but i should be actually be loading my microgreen soon here and um, yeah they have some protection from this nice green cover on top of the tunnel on this side of the tunnel i'm interested in that effect as well this is ginger here again in the middle you can see it coming up and um, so they get a lot of shade from these peppers and they're still germinating really nice I hope uh, to see some interesting developments in all this ginger I'm growing. Here's ginger under as well, some taro, and um, I'm I'm very curious and hopefully can give you some feedback. But ginger in full sun in the tunnel, let's say in the without the shade cover, actually works very well. So maybe this is too much shade. We will see how how the summer does. We are in May, so there probably gonna becomes plenty of light. Um. Yeah, so let's move. 